Hello, welcome back to the channel, and thank you to the nearly 1,000 of you that tuned in for the last episode on the Rover Metro. I'm blown away, thank you so much. Today, however, I thought I'd try and tackle the suspension. Right, so the first thing I want to check this morning, guys, is the ride height of the vehicle, which is clearly not correct. For Rover Metro, according to the Haynes Book Alliance here, it should be 341 millimetres plus or minus 10 millimetres for settlement either side. So let's get a tape measure and check that. Right, so how do you check the ride height? Well, it's quite straightforward. You're going to work from the middle of the wheel arch to the middle of the wheel there, using a tape measure. You're looking for 13 three quarter inches or 341 mil. So I'm just going to just check that now with my tape measure. Yeah, just over 11 inches, so we knew that was far too low. So we need to get to the fill point, which is located on the metro behind the rear wheel lower down. So let's get the camera and I'll show you exactly where that is. Incidentally, guys, this is the kind of stuff that you're going to need to do the job. A hydroelastic pump and the correct fluid, which is um, that one there. So the fill point in the metro, is, if I can get the camera on here, I'll show you. Here we go. There's a little shred of out here, guys. So we're going to get the cap off, get the pump connected. We'll have to jack the vehicle up, I think, to make it easier. And then we can try and get some fluid into the system. And see if we can get the suspension back to how it should be. Right, that is sodden enough. Right there, I think. I don't like jacking up on gravel, but the car's not going to go anywhere, so we should be okay. Gonna jack it on the subframe. Of course, you need to make sure all the tire pressures are at the correct settings as well. Um, if you remember in the last video, this tire was flat. I thought this was a great light socket and the car died. It wasn't that, it was my pump. That had decided just to um, end its life. So that's good, isn't it? So I got the foot pump out this morning and resolved it as a manual labour. Not good times. Right, I think that'll do. Uh, do we get an axle stand in there? Yeah, let's do that. We've got one handy. It just it can never be too safe. down and take the pressure off the jack. I'm just using 11 16 span just to tighten the hose connector on there, which is now done. And now we prime it by turning this little tap inwards. You'll hear a bit of a whoosh. There you go. And now we just have to pump it up to the correct ride height. That's the remainder of the old fluid out of the system. I can now close the valve off and start pumping the car back up. If 
you want to go and make yourself a cup of tea, I'll still be here when you get back. Probably. So, are we getting closer to that magic number? Uh, about 12 and a quarter, so we're getting closer. Also, it's important to periodically shake the car back and forth to settle the fluid that's now in the system. Otherwise, you can get a false reading. Almost lost my phone then. Should I recheck it? So bear in mind my driveway is on the slope guys, you can see the difference on the height there. So uh, it's a question of rinse and repeat on the other side, I'll get it plumbed in and I'll get the other side pumped up. It's going to be time for a cup of tea surely. Right, so before the internet explodes with a load of hate comments, I know those displacers need replacing, guys. And they were never designed to last 30 years. If you keep trying to pump a car up with little or no gas in the system, you actually run the risk of rupturing the diaphragm, then that unit is scrap. I've just done this to prove a point so I can move the car in my driveway because the, the driver's on a slope here and the car could potentially bottom out, and that would be bad times. Anyway, let's start the car, move it, and see if the suspension's settled. Right. So while the car is warming up guys, those displacers, they have to be replaced. I had to put a lot of pressure into the system to get the ride height correct, so that leads me to suspect there's little or no gas left unfortunately. So they'll need to be changed at a later date. But we can at least move the car around the driveway and make sure the, the uh, suspension level's settled. Also, I'd love to take this for a test drive, but it's not taxed or MOT, so that's not going to happen. So the driveway is where it's going to have to stay for the moment.
There we go, guys. Doesn't that look better? I cannot wait to get this back on the road. I want to give it a full service first, maybe get the tummy belt done, because I don't know when that was last um, looked into. But yeah, one step closer to being back on the road. Well done, Doris. What a difference. That has transformed the car, guys. I'm so glad we did that job today. That's going to do it for this video, I think. I'm going to leave it here. Um, there'll be more content coming on the fleet coming soon. Obviously, we've got Rustle coming up next Saturday. Really looking forward to that. I shall see you again very soon with some more content. Take care. There we go. You are now officially one of the fleet.